So the second core principle of economics is resources are scarce. I'm sure you've been told you can't have it all. Well, you can't. The problem is that all resources are finite. There's only so much bauxite in the ground. There's only so much land space. There are only so many hours in the day and number of people in the labor force and a larger population. But our wants, our desires are infinite. The person who was pictured on the opening slide is Bill Gates. Bill Gates is the person who founded Microsoft, the maker of Office and the maker of Windows and now the maker of the Xbox, game console and a hugely successful cloud business. For much of his life, Bill Gates was the richest man in the world. In the early 1990s, when he was the richest man in the world, with a net worth close to a hundred billion dollars, US dollars, he was interviewed by People magazine. And he made the statement that not, not his exact words because he's not somebody to boast but he made a statement almost with a kind of humility that for anything that he can think of that he might want to buy he can afford it so therefore in effect his wealth is infinite it doesn't provide a constraint on anything he can think of to buy it That is not the remarkable part of this. The remarkable part of the story is that a few years later, he formed a foundation, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And the first task that the foundation set itself to do was to eliminate malaria from the world. And even Bill Gates' wealth was not enough to guarantee elimination of malaria, as well as many other serious diseases, and to improve the quality of education around the world. The point of the story is that even the person who thought he could afford everything very quickly thought of things that he couldn't afford. Our desires are infinite. And so when we say that resources are scarce, we don't mean that resources are few. What we mean is that if we compare our infinite desires and wants to finite resources, then everything is scarce. There is not enough of any resource to satisfy all wants. That is the sense in which we mean scarcity. Let's take as an example of scarcity and to see its implications. Um, you know, maybe your family, your, your parents' family, your grandmother, your grandfather lived in the country on a quarter acre of land near Treasure Beach. And upon their demise, this, this piece of land is left to you. And you think to yourself, you know, I used to like when I visit the country and I visit grandpa's farm, that I always wanted to get back into farming. Although, given that you're going to get a purely decent job in Kingston when you graduate, it would also be nice to have a little country home 
in near Treasure Beach. But the quarter acre is really too small to do both. So you have to make a choice. The fact of scarcity, the fact that we can't satisfy all our desires with finite resources, gives rise to trade-offs. We have to make a choice between our desires. And the fact of trade-offs gives us the concept of opportunity cost. The opportunity cost of a choice is the alternative that we give up in order to exercise the choice that we did. It is the best foregone alternative. The one we do without instead of the option that we have chosen. Opportunity cost is a massively useful concept. So let us say you decide to go to the cinema and pay money to watch, you know, the last Avengers movie. And you were asked, well, what did it cost you? Chances are you're going to think of this only in terms of what you're paid out. But to understand opportunity cost, you have to first say, what were the resources used up in order, in order for you to go and see the Avengers movie at the cinema? Well, there was the admission fee, plus the cost of transportation to get there, so the amount of money you spent, there's also the time that you gave up, the time in transportation, and the time to watch the movie. So a good two and a half hours was used up to watch the movie. Opportunity cost answers the question, what else would you have done with that time and with that money? You know, maybe you stay in your bedroom, and you buy some credit, and you and your friends have a, have a Zoom chat and party. If that's what you would do, then missing out on that is the cost, is the opportunity cost of going to the movie. Let us look at another example. What did it cost you to go to school? Go to university last year. What is it costing you to be in university? What are the resources used up for you to have a university education? There's three years of tuition, three years of books and supplies. If you're coming from country, then it's three years of housing costs, whether on hall or in a flat nearby. And there's the actual three years of your time. So three years of tuition, let me round it up and off to like a million dollars, hundred thousand dollars of books, uh, half a million dollars in rental and utilities. So you add that up. That is how you'd answer the question. What does or did it cost you to go to university for three years? But if the question is, what is the opportunity cost? You get a different answer. You're going to have the tuition that you didn't, you're going to have the money you didn't spend on tuition. You're going to have the money you didn't spend on books and supplies. But if you're not in university as a full-time student, you're going to get a work. And that work, is going to give you a salary. That is part of the opportunity cost, that you are giving up a full-time pay in order to be in university. You would still have to pay rent somewhere if you live in the country and a job is in Kingston. So you wouldn't even count the cost of housing. The cost of housing is not a cost of being in university. 
is a cost of being. So opportunity cost says, what would you have if you did not, if you weren't in university? You would have the million dollars tuition, you would have the 100,000 books and supplies, and you would have $900,000 of income. And what would you do with that? Well, maybe you'd buy a car. Opportunity cost of your university education that you would have after three years is the car that you would have after three years. So that is what the concept of opportunity cost gets you. And we're going to say it's really important. Economists are fond of this phrase. There's no such thing as a free lunch. When you see something being offered for free, if you sign up, you'll get a free sweater. If you buy a credit today, you will get a free phone. That would be nice. But to an economist, you can be free. To an economist, the person who is getting to use it doesn't pay for it, but it uses up resources. It uses up resources that could have produced something else that somebody else would have had. So nothing can be free. Those resources have an alternative use, have an opportunity cost. There is no such thing as a free lunch. Kingston, like many cities, has well-to-do neighborhoods and neighborhoods with poorer quality housing. And very often these neighborhoods are close to each other. But what you never see is a well-off neighborhood with expensive home homes and then in the middle of it, you see one really poor quality house. One, one room, worn down, worn out house that looked like it had been there for the last half a century. And it's not difficult to think of how this might have come about. Because a lot of what we know now to be well-off neighborhoods, high-income neighborhoods, not that long ago was country. Was country and bush with low-value land that country people had been living on for some time. What has happened is that the city has expanded and incorporated these neighborhoods. So it's inconceivable that a man would have had, you know, a poor quality house in Cherry Gardens when it was country and handed it down to his children, who handed it down to their children, who handed it down to their children. And then one day, you know, his, his, his pure mansion built up around it. But yet still we don't see it. And the reason we don't see it is that the man who lives in that shack, even though he couldn't, he didn't buy it and couldn't buy it now, would be incentivized to sell it. Somebody whose roof is leaking and who can barely afford school and lunch money for the children, would not be sitting on a $30 million piece of land that he could sell and move to a poorer neighborhood, but with a better quality house and more of the amenities that make up a full life. In other words, in the same way that a man in, or a woman in this condition wouldn't buy land in Cherry Gardens, the land has the same opportunity cost, and so he wouldn't refuse to sell it either. 
the opportunity cost of living on that land is too great. And that's why we don't see it. Always have in mind the concept of opportunity cost. So a letter to the editor in the Gleaner. Calling to teach students the value of manufacturing. I mean, production is important and manufacturing is important. And what can be wrong with teaching students the value of manufacturing? Surely this will give a boost to manufacturing in Jamaica. But we have information that of all the students that goes that go into high school each year, each cohort, when you look at the number of those students, when you look at the share of those students that end up passing mathematics and English in fifth form exams after five years, it's pitiful. Students are coming out unable to pass. The vast majority are coming out unable to pass mathematics and English, which is the basis of what you need to get a half decent job to do anything. So what an economist sees, let's teach students the value of manufacturing. What looks like a harmless proposal begs the question, the resources that you are going to use to teach the value of manufacturing, is this the best use of it? Shouldn't we use that time in the school day and that teacher to teach maths so that the students are better equipped to function in life? The opportunity cost of teaching the value of manufacturing is worse math and English outcomes. And this, what looks like an innocent suggestion, is now exposed to be a completely ridiculous idea that we should use up educational resources to teach the value of manufacturing. What do we take away? And as you see, you're provided with a handy, reusable, non-plastic bag to take away your takeaway. Because desires always exceed what is possible with finite resources, choices have to be made. <laughs>